Good morning. This is Cheryl with the Back to Living podcast. I um, want to do something a little different today. Every now and then I get um, where I start typing, start writing, whatever, and I write for a very long time. I don't really, I just start writing. Anyway, that happened to me last night. Um, I started writing and going through what I was going to go through on my uh, podcast today, and um, it was 10.30. It's like, okay, I can do this 10, 15 minutes. Well, I look up when I finish, and it's 12.30. Now, I'm not gonna, it's not that long, but um, if you don't mind, I'm going to read my thoughts uh, from last night, um, and I will try to hurry through this, but it was a lot of my thoughts on what I normally talk about. And a few other things so if you could bear with me I would appreciate that um, again uh, welcome this is the back to living podcast there's life after loss I am Cheryl Stevens and no I am NOT a counselor a doctor or anything it's just that I spent um, well my background is I spent 40 years in the insurance industry but talking about what I talk about the grief and everything I'm a widow I'm going through it um, and I'm going to look down and read I'm sorry the ones that are watching I'm gonna look down and read it says but what I am is a fairly new widow less than three years and I've gone through nearly three years of grief anger depression anxiety hopelessness being alone and so many more emotions and part a very small part of my issues are that I got married at age 19 I moved from my daddy's house into my husband's. I have never lived alone until I lost my husband. You know, we had a few nights apart now and then for work and other things. Uh, but, you know, he was coming back and it was just a few nights. Um, some part of me still feels like he'll come through that door soon. And he's just been out for a while. Then realities, realities start seeping back in, and here we go again. I ask myself, what would Gerald think of what I'm doing now with the podcast and the crafting and everything else? Would he be pleased? Would he be proud of me? Or think I need to go back to what I know, which is insurance? I know that he would tell me to do what makes me happy. I know that in my heart. He would tell me um, to do what makes me happy. Insurance no longer makes me happy even though I spent over 40 years in that industry and I think why I'm feeling the way I am it's so very different than how my life was before the loss of my husband mornings would be getting me ready my lunch ready feed the animals get Gerald's meds and his lunch set up for the day get his breakfast I would drive about 45 minutes to work go through the day I'd work through lunch most times um, and Gerald had to take medications at a certain time and that meant on certain medicines he had to do it on an empty stomach so he would have to eat dinner at a certain time so I would rush home it would take me more than 45 minutes to get home sometimes an hour hour and a half due to traffic and I would have to make something for him to eat for dinner if I hadn't done during the day by five o'clock so I'm out the door by 645 or so because I was working seven uh, six thirty and I'm home by five um, some days I made it some days I didn't in the evenings it was looking after uh, his meds his stability and his movement was getting more and more limited but I digress from what I was gonna say he would be proud of me but I think he would also question why I'm doing this what's the purpose what am I doing um, what do I hope to get out of this what is the purpose well the answer to that has several layers first talking about my husband's death helps me heal this is not to, my talking about is not to help anyone heal but but me I can tell stories of his crazy sense of humor or how good he was at cooking and made the best smoked cheese I've ever tasted I get to share stories we created together for 41 years but at the same time, I don't want to go back being that person stuck at a desk for eight hours doing a job I no longer have any desire to do. So I talk, sometimes better than others. I talk about how painful losing someone is. I talk about the depression I went into, and I'm not fully out of yet. I talk about what it was like 
to go to the grocery store for the first time after his passing. I talk about all the things that come to mind, but today the Lord has laid on my heart to talk about what I'm doing now. As hard as it is to say out loud, uh, because it is painful, but me, as well as you, have a chance to start right now, this very minute, to live your dream. Not the combined dream of you and your spouse. It's your dream. Find out what makes you happy. Find the one thing you can sit down and work on for hours. And it's a pleasure, not a burden. And that pleasure is part of the gift that God gave you. Now is the time to take your talents, your gifts, and see how you can impact the world by serving others with your gift. Take some time this week and write down what you dreamed you would, you would be when you grew up and how it changed throughout your years in school and college and after you got married. And I, I bet it, yeah, I bet it changed when you got married. Has your dream changed? Has it taken your talent or gift away from you? Now is the time to really dig deep and find that one thing that you love to do and explore how you can grow off of that. Let your spouse be so proud of, well, let's see. Let your spouse be so proud of what you have been able to do, how accomplished you have become. When I get to heaven, I don't want God to ask me what I did with my talents and gifts he gave me and have to tell him I hid them away and did not use them all. That would be so sad. So find yours. Find a way to use them. If your gift is a love of reading, then you can volunteer at schools to help, or be a tutor to help children that need help learning to read. If you're not ready for that, then by all means, you need to take your time. You'll know when you're ready. Our families many times and our culture tells us to move forward, try to set a time limit on our morning. I'm here to tell you that um, it's different from everyone. Some things I wish... Um, some, this is some things I wish you would do this week. Get a journal. At the top of the page, write today's date. Write what is on your heart. It can be one sentence or several paragraphs. Try to do this daily. But list it at least one, more if you can, items that you're grateful, grateful for. Uh, examples, um, I got to go to work. I got to work with no accidents. Someone brought donuts to work today. The rain has stopped for a few days so the yards can dry out. I really like the color of this shirt that my sister gave me. I'm grateful I have a sister. Grateful for anything you have. You can always find something to be grateful for. Start with maybe one word, then tomorrow two, the next three, until you're up to 10 to 12 grateful items you're writing down a day. Different ones. Just, just anything. This will help you get your mind off of your pain and start seeing that there are so many things around you that you are blessed with and God is still watching over you. He's still here and you still have a purpose because you are still here. And um, thank you for letting me read this today. I, like I say, I, I don't know, it's, I wanna, it's not a trance, but I get in something and I just, I kind of just, I just go there and do what the Lord's telling me to do, and this is one of them. So, thank you for joining me today. Again, this has been Cheryl Stevens uh, with my podcast, Back to Living. There's life after loss. You can reach me uh, via email at champagnebeautybycheryl at gmail.com or message me on Facebook uh, or Instagram by the same name, which is Champagne Beauty by Cheryl. At the top of my Facebook post also you will find a calendar um, that if you would like to be on my podcast I would love to interview you be able to talk to you or you just get on and tell us about you and what you're going through um, and we can help go through and see how we can help you start living your best your champagne life also join me back here tonight um, at 8 p.m. Central Time. Tracy Smith Randall will be interviewing me and promoting a book coming out in December. Um, I'll be talking about that because I have been asked to put uh, together some a few tips and just be, you know, five, six, seven tips in this book. So we're going to be talking about that a little bit, give you a little bit of preview. And I hope you'll join us. Thank you for joining me today. And have a blessed Thursday. It's November, my birthday month. I'm excited. 
So everyone be careful today. Have a blessed day and I will talk to you tonight. Bye.